Guten Tag, wie geht's? Or should I say, bonjour, buongiorno, buenos dias, konnichiwa, ni hao, or simply, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Sorry for that intro. I'm going to be going to Switzerland later this month, so I had to at least say guten Tag. Anyway, in this video, we are going to get to rebar tying. As you can see, we tie all of our bar before we stack walls. So let's get into how we do it, and then I'll explain why. Okay, so let's get into the rebar for this foundation. It's a basement foundation with 10 foot tall stem walls across the front. Then it steps down to the back. We call those daylight basements. Some people call them walkout basements. I think because you can walk out or we call them daylight because anyway. Interesting rebar on this. In the background and in previous videos, you saw that tied into the footing steel, we have those verts that have the rebar caps. Those are on 10 inches center and they'll get two horizontal bars. Now I have an additional mat of steel along the inside or tension face of the um, foundation wall. We drill six, inch, six inches deep into the footing. That's what Tyler's doing in the background. And these 10 footers are gonna drop into those holes. I'm going ahead and spray painting every 12 inches because that's our rebar schedule. So number four bar, vertical, 12 inches. Then horizontal steel, 12 inches, okay? So I find that if I just spray paint these 12 inches on center, then I know 12 inches. By the way, point the can up, empty out the nozzle. It's good to go. I painted the top so that I know that it's the top. Now, I'm gonna try to explain this as we go and I hope it makes sense. As we drill the 10 foot or drill the holes for the 10 foot sticks, then I can go ahead and take those pieces that I had just laid out and I can drop them in the hole. Because I laid them out there on the sawhorses, and other times I lay them out in the rock, those holes need to be basically six inches, plus or minus maybe a half. I'm gonna go ahead and drop all those verts in. Now these verts have to be three inches away from the inside of my concrete. So you as the viewer, if you were to touch the foundation wall three inches away, that's where the steel's at. Those verts that are already precast same thing from the opposite side. This mat is 12 by 12 and it's on the tension side of the face. So imagine that that hill of dirt just sloughs right into the wall. As the wall stretches toward the camera, that's the tension side. So just imagine that you're stretching something as it pushes toward you. Okay, enough with the engineering because that's about all I know. The real star of this whole thing is the rebar tying gun. I've talked about it in other videos. I love using it. What I want you to notice in this section of video is that I am not killing myself as far as speed <laughs> because I don't need to. The tool's gonna do all of the work and it is doing all of the work. I can set 20 foot sticks by myself. Now I'll show it a little bit later. You can kind of see it on the footing that when I set the sticks down, I spray paint them to match the vertical layout. And that gives me the grid. This is the Max Twin Tire. It's the latest and it's the greatest. I'll, I'll, I think I'll kind of show our older Max and a Makita, which just does not tie quite as tight. I'm not, not really a fan of that gun. I would stick with Max. As far as I know, they invented and originally patented these tools and they've got decades behind them. Okay, so I digress. The way we had this lined out is as Tyler was drilling the holes so that I could put the 10 foot sticks in place. I gave Noah a whole list of um, sticks to cut and it was his job to completely just manage himself. Take all, all of our bar comes out in 20 foot lengths. He's gonna cut all of those down to the lengths that I give him. So there he, there he is hauling them as he goes, okay? This is all about repetition and accuracy. I don't, I don't know why this, uh, <laughs> why it's following him. You might have to touch up the camera angle there. I'm able to set the sticks up to about maybe six feet high by myself. That way everybody stays busy. And we're back. <laughs> so I used DaVinci Resolve to do all of my video editing. And it's got some kind of neural, I forget what they call it, processing, where you can draw a box around somebody 
and it will follow them around. Anyway, it got a little confused there. Back to the rebar. The way I like to do it is I get one up about eye level and I make sure that they're all tied and it looks straight. You can kind of see there's a little bit of a sag there, but not too bad. I can adjust, yeah. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want to make it look good because if it looks good, then we're more likely to pass inspection. Also, we need to meet the engineering. Okay, so I like to do the middle one, tie it to all of them. The bottom one, tie it to all of them. That basically keeps me straight between them. And then it's just a matter of putting them on 12 inches on center, right? Not trying to work my tail off at this point because we're gonna stack walls later and that's the hard heavy work. I think you can get a sense for just how productive that rebar tying tool really is. It will circle back around to that in just a couple of minutes. Yeah, I think so. We'll see how it goes. We might have to oppose it. Um, go ahead and check, and then we'll see which way it needs to go before I shove it in there. Okay, something I need to point out is that while Noah is significantly taller than me, <laughs> he's not that much taller, 12-inch footings are filled with rock before the steel and walls go in on Noah's side. On my side, not only am I already a foot shorter than Noah, <laughs> now I'm two feet shorter than Noah. Anyway, I don't know, that kind of tickled my funny bone. Kind of all leaning that way, isn't it? Yeah, I can see it. So basically, here's a rule of thumb, Noah. You want these angled the same direction that it needs to go, because it, when, it, when we go that way, it's gonna wanna push back to where it started. And if the top is that way, if you did it this way, it's gonna just go with it. Oh, okay. That's the reason for an X brace. Oh, okay. So that means that we gotta go that way a lot. So I'm going to tie it down here. So yeah, the top of the brace always angles the direction the wall needs to go. You just tell me. I'm gonna tie it in one spot. And then you tell me, you're still good? Okay. I would have preferred to go all the way to the top with these, but I just don't, just feel like we're gonna be fine. It's all relying on friction at this point. Okay, see if it comes back. Pretty good? Okay, check it in like two other spots. I usually go each end and the middle, and I, I pick a bar that doesn't have a big wow in it. Wow, that was from just go. Yeah. But if you check like the next two, those look a little more vertical. We can tap these if we need to. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, yeah. That's pretty good. Okay, then I'm just gonna beat this one over. And we'll make it look prettier. Oh, okay, then we'll untie it. That's my fault. Good catch, Noah, good catch. Okay, do we like where it's at otherwise, though? Uh, yeah. uh, what do you think, Tyler? Yeah. Good enough? Okay. Then if you've got the dikes, Tyler, we gotta pull this one like an idiot. I, nail, I um, tied it to the outside. Wow. All right, Noah, let's do this then. We are plumb there. We are plumb there. I want to do this guy. Okay. It's gonna come my way a little. We're gonna go like that. Out just a hair and back. So we're gonna go. Plum? And almost plum. So we're gonna go this way. Okay. Ok, 
Okay, plum. I'm gonna go back a little bit more. Okay, let's check this guy. Giddy up. Okay, so what I would do next time is I would order these mostly prefab, like pre-cut for every wall length. But I love the 24 by 24 corners because as you could see there, it allows me to dial things in. So we had tied some angled steel just to keep things relatively straight and plumb, but we're still gonna pull that all together at the corners by checking plumb each way. Same thing as the other bar, I'm gonna go about eye level. Once that's locked in, then I can just go without really thinking from that point down. Uh, not not a whole lot of rocket surgery here. Just do it right. <laughs> you know, make sure you don't have bars tied on the wrong side of bars and try to make it look pretty. And if you do tie something on the wrong side, carry a pair of dikes, snip the wire, and then fix it real quick. So there's another look at the, the paint. That allowed us to line up the grid. Looking pretty clean, pretty clean. Um, I'll end up taking pictures of this, drone pictures. Yes, the inspectors come out and they look inside the walls, but just in case they ask or you know, hopefully they follow us on social media. They can see it. All right. So this guy's ready for you guys if you want. Both sides of that. Uh, no, uh, there is four or five. Four. I can't count. I, I can't count. And then I think I'll go over <clears throat> and kind of get prepped over there. Okay. Hey Tim. Yeah. Do you want to do an impression of Tyler? Okay. Alright. Say just say anything, Noah. Say something that's supposed to be funny. Um How's it going, Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now do an impression of Kyle. <laughs> Tyler's not laughing as hard as you and Kyle laughed. <laughs> I, I told him, I was like, I can do an impression of anybody, but it's the same impression of really nobody. <laughs> as long as, as long as Noah laughs, right? Okay, so... Whoa, 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 whoa. You want this level? You can take it. I don't need one. Good catch. Good catch, bruh. All right, I'm going to get some tie wire. Heel first, heel first. Well, of the, of the bottle. Did you see that catch? Okay, so here's the first couple of sticks. I just go through and put a dab of paint at each of the verts. That way it's laid out to where the verts actually are. We had already laid those out 12 inches on center, but yeah, I don't know. That seems, like seems like the easiest. Just line up the yellow. <laughs> it's, I think it's pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. I actually really enjoy this kind of thing. <laughs> um, not looking forward to the rest okay, of this project, I don't mind saying, but this part of it's kind of fun, only because of the rebar tying tool. I think I started to say earlier and then I got distracted. The rebar tying tool is expensive. It's between $2,600 and $2,900 uh, US dollars. I don't know what that translates to in other countries, but... I don't have to spend months or years getting really fast at hand tying. I can instantly be fast. So I guess the price of the tool replaces how much time it takes me to get good at it by hand. And I'm, I'm going to say something that's going to be super offensive to some people. I'm not going to get tired doing this. <laughs> now, I can, I can tie at the same speed yeah, so for hours if I needed to. But if I was hand tying, you get tired quicker. So uh, there's a bunch of commercial guys that will get on here and they'll say good things about these tools and they'll get on here and say bad things about these tools. That tells me that okay. people, I don't know, that, what, what does it tell me? It doesn't tell me anything. Everybody's got an opinion. Here's the video you can see for yourself. These ties, by the way, are tight enough that you can climb on these walls. If you needed to, you could always double tie by just, see how the um, tool is rotated? 
I could just rotate it opposite and double tie if, if I need it. But I posted on social media before of me climbing around on these walls with just these ties. So. So it can be a little challenging because I've got the verts already in the concrete. And yes, they move a little bit when we pour, when we actually poured the concrete. In fact, this is the foundation that we poured in the pouring rain. You know, when it rains, we pour. Place concrete, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But anyway, you can see how I have to kind of thread it in there. Not a big deal. Okay, it's so not a big a deal. Higher. I think all iron workers would laugh because they have to put in steel that's heavier, bigger, and a whole lot more of it. There's a definite process to that. But you can see on these walls, we have a lot of rebar, big footings. They're tall walls, very well made. We're in seismic zone D2. I recently had a conversation with our engineer and he asked me, did you install it the way I told you to install it? Yes, I did. By the way, here is the proof. <laughs> so anyway, looks good. not a whole lot really mentally to the rebar tying. The big thing is you want to make sure that you have the um, coverage. So for example, sometimes the rebar is called out to be one inch off the face of the form. That's tough. This was called out to be three inches, so we had some room. When we actually go to place concrete during the pouring process, or the placing process, we will be using a concrete vibrator to help all of that concrete consolidate around the steel. This, this isn't really that much steel, and we can pour a pretty loose slump, but sometimes there's so much steel, you have to vibrate that stuff or it won't consolidate properly. And then kind of ask yourself, what was the point? If we're gonna do it, let's do it right. I know a big chunk of this video is just watching me with GoPro on my head, looking like a fool, but it's showing it in real time with the tool. And here is a pro tip for you. You can rent Two these more, tools four more. and it's well worth the price of renting. So that's just my two cents, or should I say $2,600 in cents? No, I don't know. The way I do it, these are 20 foot sticks, is I balance it in the middle, I tie it, then I go to each end, eyeball it straight, and then finish tying it. You can skip tie these, meaning tie every other. They don't all have to be tied, at least according to our instructions. Um, you just want them, you want them on the spacing and you don't want it to move while you place concrete. So um, a lot of times I was tying every one. I wanted it to be really stout in case we needed to climb on it, but if you were doing this for yourself or you're new to this, you don't have to. That's not a requirement unless it is a requirement, but it was not a requirement. Oh man, I'm just talking in circles. It, it's not required for us because there. the steel is tied where it needs to be. But sometimes the engineer, he might say, he, he or she might say that they want that tied to every intersection. So follow the engineering. Can you kind of see why I like using the tool? <laughs> It could just be mindless. And the tool is doing all of the work. My brain is doing very little. My body's doing very little, but the tool is doing the bulk of the work. So I don't know. I don't need to sell you on this. I already sold myself on it. So that's all, that's all I need. It's great because at one point I might've even recorded it. He's like, so I was talking to my therapist yesterday and expressing how anxious I get, like, are they gonna like the set list? You know, are people, he's like, so I'm gonna go and do probably my greatest hit and everybody's gonna be happy with it and then it doesn't matter what I play after that. And I'm gonna find the one guy in the audience who doesn't wanna sing along and I'm gonna stare him down till he sings along and then he launches into Your Body is a Wonderland. Uh -huh. And we're all singing, it is like so nostalgic, you know, what was that, 2002? Yeah. But it was like, um, he really wasn't taking himself seriously but just wailing on the guitar. And then this guitar player guy comes out and he's playing to the crowd. And it was just like, just like the energy was so good. Okay. Just for the sake of the camera, let's see if I can do this by myself.
Dude, I can totally do this alone. Okay, so there we go. There's one here. Can I do it? Can I do it? I think I can. Nah. See, when you're a short guy, is that pretty good? Okay, and then this guy, I'm gonna leave untied so we do the corner, because we may want to kind of bend that back. Yeah. You can go past, man. You can just go right yeah, past. Thank you. Yeah, just line it up with that guy. Giddy up. Giddy up, duders. I just made that term up. Really? Yeah. I could have sworn that was already a phrase. I think like my greatest my greatest strength is my ability my ability to innovent. Mm. Which is a word I just innovented. Oh. That's the That's a 30 rock joke. Really? Yep. Perhaps the greatest of all time. That's a, that's pretty 30 rock is pretty I never got into it. Oh. Ah. Tracy Jordan, I, yeah, I, I did not that. like him at first. Hey, look at that. Okay, I can come around. You guys did not. You did not do rule number one, Noah. Levels should be close and corners. How many corners do we need? I already have corners. Okay, you got corners. So you did a good job. Now this is why if I could be any of the X-Men, I would be Magneto, mm. and then later today I would be Storm mm. for good weather. Can I get this? No. Oh. Wait, was it tape? If I had my uh, magnetic tape too, although. Oh, there you go. oh my goodness, you are Magneto. See, you no, know, when you're a short guy, you learn, you learn all the tricks. Since we've got our planks and we've got our Reachcraft Broncos, and we have two pairs of those. One is still from the 90s. It did finally break on the far foundation. I'll put a link in the description. The Reachcraft Broncos are well worth their weight in gold, in my opinion. But so tying up to about as high as I could reach, which really wasn't that tall, don't tell anybody. Then set up the plank quickly, and we can finish tying from there all the way up to the nine foot six. Easy, easy, easy. Well, I mean, it's not easy but it's easier than the alternative. Same thing, tie all the straight bar, make the grid look pretty pretty, decently pretty, like maybe an eight. If 10 is if ten is beautiful, maybe it's a seven or an eight. But I'm, you know, if, and then tie the corners. So we had already tied up to about eye level, so it's tying in the top. And at that point, I'm not really worried about plumb as much as just holding everything tight to the level so that it stays in plane. Once the walls are stacked, we can sneak some uh, tie wire in there and kind of pull that bar to where it needs to be off of the face of the wall. So Tyler and Noah basically just stayed on the plank and moved it as needed. And then I leapfrogged either side of them off of the eight foot tripod ladder, super stable ladders. And that, that seemed to work out really well. They had a 20 foot plank and I think we had, no, a 24 foot plank and a 20 foot plank. So whatever seemed to fit, or make sense, that's what we did. And you can see, easy to tie bar off a ladder too. Look at that, I can just reach right over because I can hold onto my ladder with the other hand, so. Look at those skills, they're able to move the, tri the Bronco tripods, the Reachcraft Bronco tripod, they're adjustable too, so that you can be on uneven ground. I always take the plank off and go reset up, but they're doing it way smarter than I do it. I was kind of thinking of making the sound of that rebar tying tool, maybe like a uh, notification when I get a text. Just kidding. After a while, it is kind of not not the best sound. 
What I could do, Tyler, I can go get a 10 footer and have you guys push this plumb yeah. and we'll brace this. And then, and then that guy, think if the top got done at your spacing and you know what you're doing over there. Yeah, let me go grab a 10. Okay, what I'm gonna do. No, but you get more. Uh, you're gonna go on the outside? I think because I, I really wanna be on the in between. Right. Gotcha. It's like the song, but like the line from the song. So if you tie, let's see, which way we gotta go? We gotta push in. Okay, so let's rotate this guy. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'll just tie as much as I can. Yeah. You good there? Yep, right here. Okay. What I'll do is climb up there if I can. And we'll just see if this will be enough friction. Okay, will it stay? Pretty much, I mean, you gotta, you gotta tie the top. And then I got a little bit here to do, so yeah. Okay. Um, I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I really want to get this done by lunch. Yeah, I think we can we can make it. What time is it? Ten thirty. Oh yeah, we got plenty of time. Ten thirty-eight. We got an hour. Two days. I mean, if we've done all of this. What if we actually just started at like ten thirty-nine? I think like more like nine. Okay, so now that things are like locked in plumb, then Tyler and Noah, who by the way, by the way, had never tied rebar or worked on foundations before. Noah helped us a little bit like the previous month, but this is me with two people who have, <laughs> I don't know how to finish that sentence. Tyler has tons of skills, but he had never done this before. Noah also, but same thing, never had done this. So, you know, we're, I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but let's just put it this way. As a crew, we weren't exactly super experienced. So it was going really well. As they take care of the top stuff, you know, from like my eyeball height up, then I'm over on the other end getting all of that started because we'll end up with a window well over there. And you'll see that later when we form walls. So anyway, yeah, sometimes I just, I don't know. I don't know. All right, well, I know that this is a long video. I really didn't intend it to be this long, but I just wanted to let a bunch of it happen in real time, mostly just to show off that rebar tying tool. <laughs> By rebar tying tool, I meant the Max Rebar Twin Tire, not the three guys tying rebar. So anyway, here's the drone view, 10 foot high. You could kind of see there a second ago, but you'll see it definitely as we stack the panels and then into placing concrete and then finally strip. And then really, I want to put these jobs in my rear view mirror and burn rubber because this was really a hard, hard set of jobs. But it looked like we were having fun. So I think we were having fun. It was a huge help having Tyler. He's a friend of ours. I'd worked with his dad many years ago. He was available. And I'm telling you, he was a lifesaver. Turns out we had the same taste in music. I love that guy. I really do. That was such a man. I just... I, I pray every day, thank you, thank you, thank you for Tyler. That was a huge, huge, huge help. I just can't can't say it enough. 
you'll see a little bit more of him as we roll through the job next door too. So there's all the steel. It's done. Now we're ready to stack panels. Um, I'll actually show you most of that footage from the job next door. When we formed all of this job, it just poured rain on us. Yep. It did also next door, but I, at least I got footage. <laughs> so anyway, there's what the job looks like. Footings. We put the uh, rock in before any of the panels or the rebar because it, it's a lot less expensive. There's that 150 project. It's a playlist here on YouTube. We're going to be back to that soon. Got a bunch of roof framing content, fall protection, all that good stuff. Hey, these neighbors or these owners, they're going to have a beautiful view. So thank you, everybody, for hanging in. I hope you did. 35 minutes, really? All right, I'm out of here. Heading to a Blind Pilot concert. Hope you guys have a good Wednesday or whatever day you're watching this. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe or don't. But you know where to find us.